You know, I, I think that the overwhelming experience of most men, at least in the Western world, is that we are utterly alone in our lives. Even if we're surrounded by people, everything is on my shoulders, which means I can't afford to fail, right? If I, because if I fail, you know, my family doesn't eat or I don't eat or, you know, I lo- the, the world falls apart. And that is not a very resilient, friendly stance Yeah, because the fear of failure, the fear of messing up, the fear of getting it wrong is so the stakes are so high yeah. that most of us men tend to then just, we don't play to win, we just play not, not to, lose. to lose. Yeah. Welcome to Men This Way. Tate, my man, how you doing? I'm, <laughs> I'm good, brother. I am, uh, I am both enlivened and exhausted all at the same time. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we're on the other side of our, of our annual elevate men's retreat five days in the North Carolina mountains with uh, the men that we've been working with for the last six months. We get, this is our, this is the time of year when we get to, to, to do some deep work in person and, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted. I mean, I'm, you know, it's been a week now, so I'm more or less recovered, still tired, spent, but, but just also so lit up, so grateful. Um, yeah, man. What what was a highlight for you, Tate? Oh man, I, I, it's this this retreat is one of the greatest weeks of my year. Every single year, we've been doing this for four years, and it's it's definitely a highlight for me. Um, life life changing on, on so many levels. You know, we set this up so that this retreat would be in the very middle of a year long experience that we we create. And what's always so profound to me, and and this was no exception, this year was no exception, that the first six months watching these guys just transform, it's almost like, you know, they they fast forward their growth and development by a few years in the first six months. And then we go into this retreat. And within five days, you can see them literally transform another you know, six months, year before your very eyes, they have, watching these men come alive, watching them get connected, watching them grow, watching them develop, watching them cry, watching them just, you know, live all out in five days is, is one of the most beautiful experiences that I get to have in my lifetime. So that, that, that for me is the highlight. How about for you, man? Yeah, I think for you know the, those first few months, it's like we're getting to know these men. They're getting to know each other through uh, through really faces on a screen, right? And the different formats that we use to do that, and and it's it's I think I think we do a great job. It's uh, the men clearly get a lot of value out of it. But when, and we always say this, right? W- when the retreat happens, everything changes, and and getting to watch that, you know, I'm very tactile, so I like to. I'm, you know, I'm very physical. I need to, you know, I was a wrestler in high school. Like it's one of the things I love about the retreat is just the getting to actually touch each other. And, and I just mean that in the way of like give physicality to each other and feel like, you know, like, like I love going up to a man and just like, oh man, you know, like when we first, you'll get to hug and feel that pat, you know, I'm patting right now. You you can probably hear that or see it on the video, but like there's something about that. Like, okay, now we're embodied. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, as you and I, we get to be the facilitators of this. I mean, it's such a, a roller coaster ride, those, those five days. It's such a roller coaster ride, certainly for the participants, but also, you know, for you and me. It's like we have our structure, we have our agenda. Yeah. And, but, but I, I love that we play on the edge of what is actually unfolding real time, such that, um, it's, it's, it's just thrilling and invigorating and uh, for everybody. I, I also, the other thing that is always really profound for me, I, I think about what's our origin story for how we came into doing this for the last four years. But the origin of this really began probably for me in college, joining a fraternity and tr- trying to clumsily enter into a you know, it's, it's largely still an adolescent, it's an awesome experience, but largely still an adolescent experience of, 
of being a man and trying to figure out what it means to be a man. But what's so cool about this is that we've created a fucking killer experience. You know, I, I've been doing men's work, being in men's groups since 2003. You've been for at least that long and doing doing this journey. And so all of the different elements that we've pulled together from the high highs to the low lows, to the emotion, to the fun, to the spontaneity, to it, it's it's just such a fucking epic ride for five days that again, you know, that's why I'm both enlivened and exhausted because we go all out, but it's, but it's also, man, it's just such a cool, cool thing. And the retreat is just, just one part of the year long experience that we get to create at, inside of how, how do, how does a brotherhood really come together? I think, you know, as you're talking about like having been involved in, in men's work in some way, or at least men gathering, right? That we've been doing that our entire lives in one form, from, you know, starting from little league, you know, playing little league baseball, uh, which I think you and I, we played on the really same did. team at least and once. Your, your mom came in and gave one of the most epic envisioning experiences that I, I, I ever had as a kid. Yeah, the, totally. The first mindset work we ever did. The first was, that's mindset right. work of my life was from your mother. Yep, to, to, it, helping us envision hitting the ball uh, when we were like eleven. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. I think you know, I think about my journey through yep fraternity, through sports teams, through the military. Yeah. You know, so much of my gathering with men for so many years was not safe. Yeah. In the sense yeah. of, I couldn't really trust that these men could see the real me and still accept me. Right, that they wouldn't make fun of me, wouldn't uh, somehow you know, exploit me, dismiss me, yeah. cut me down, uh, and I and I think that you know what I what I'm really proud of is that we've taken our past experiences, like you said, you know the 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 stuff that was good, the stuff that was bad, that was unwanted, and <clears throat> you know what what happens for men because each of these men they come in. And by the way, if you're listening to this right now, just again, no, Tate and I are just coming off this retreat experience. So we're kind of high. <laughs> bear with know, us. Just bear with us. You know, <sighs> this is, uh, this is, we're not, we're not just trying to promote this program. We're genuinely high. And yeah, yeah. we, we definitely want to invite men to consider joining us for next year's, but, but this is a pinnacle experience of our year. And, and when men gather in person in this way, and we've been working with them for a number of months, the like seeing the deeper levels of trust that because even still men come in with a bit of a fragile trust, right? There's still that, okay, we've been doing work for six months. They've been getting to know each other. We've been doing courageous work for six months, but there's still like that, that question mark. Okay. If I really let these guys see me, will they still accept me? Will I still belong? Right. And so I, that's one of the highlights for me as you, as we come out of the retreat is just seeing men so lit up and feeling so strengthened in their belonging. Right. And then they go home and now they're, they're enabled, they're empowered to have difficult conversations with partners, with family that they never would have had before. Because if they have that conversation and it goes sideways and they, they lose that relationship, they got nothing. Now they're, they're steeled with a brotherhood, with a trust. We talk about that in a lot of our work, a trustable brotherhood. Well, this is what we mean. This is the consequence. You know, men can go home and have, and have dangerous conversations in skillful, more skillful ways. And, and because they know they have other men who genuinely have their back. And there's just something so profound in that. Look, I, I and what you're really pointing to is what, what is the promises? of a trustable brotherhood? What, 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 what are the fruits? If, if men really do create a trustable brotherhood in their life, uh, what can they be assured of? And, and you're speaking to the first promise of it, which is that, that people get, that men get to experience courage. It does take courage to step into a men's group to, to be, and we'll talk about why for in a moment, but the very first promise of being able to, when you get into a trustable brotherhood is that you get to experience courage, not only to step into the brotherhood, but then to step into the other areas of your life that really do matter to you most, because you know that you, that, that there are men that have your back 
And if a man, you know, we had this really beautiful, powerful experience this morning about stepping up and around and in counsel for a man who's trying to navigate things in his relationship and knowing that that men had his back to show up and, and share with him some some thoughts and some wisdom and for him to take a, a challenge that we issued for him. He gets courage to, again, go set into that. Uh, you know, we, I'll, I'll go to the second one and then you can talk about, about the last, but the, the second promise of a trustable brotherhood is that men get to be more powerfully present in their lives. They get to show up fully for things that matter to him again, because he knows that a man, other men have his back. How can he be more powerfully present in the areas of his life that matter to him in his health and his relationship as a father, in his business, as an entrepreneur, as a neighbor, just so, so to know that there's promises. And what we also know to be true is that if you don't have a trustable brotherhood, then what's on the other side of that is that the promises don't aren't as enlivened in your life. You have a little bit less courage. You have a little bit less presence. You have a little bit less resilience. Talk, talk about how a, how a trustable brotherhood helps you build resilience. So that's the third promise in our in our frame of of what a trustable brotherhood gives to a man is is to is resilience and and what we mean by that is you know i think that the overwhelming experience of most men at least in the western world is that we are utterly alone in our lives even if we're surrounded by people everything is on my shoulders which means i can't afford to fail right if I, because if i fail you know, my family doesn't eat or I don't eat or, you know, I lo- the, the world falls apart. And that is not a very resilient, friendly stance Yeah, because the fear of failure, the fear of messing up, the fear of getting it wrong is so, the stakes are so high Yeah, that most of us men tend to then just I think Shrink. I can't remember who said this. Joe Polish, maybe we we're, we don't play to win. We just play not to, not lose. to lose. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. when we have other men at our side, and this is what you know, we're seeing the fruits of this in yeah. in our Elevate Twenty Four crew. When we have men at our side, we know that we can go out. We can experiment. We can be courageous in our in our vulnerability and our conversations and our choices. We can let's talk about again be be present. We can really show up. For the challenges and and the people that we love and the challenges yeah. that that we're faced with, yeah. and if we fail, if we get it wrong, it's okay, you know, because there are other men there that have our backs. You know, the the group that I've been in, my men's group for like the last four years. This man, we have shown up for each other. We have, you know, we're we're we have you know various economic strata. You know, we got guys making millions of dollars and we got guys that are still trying to figure out how to, to get their business off the ground and not making any money. You know, there are times where, where, where a man is genuinely in some kind of crisis and we rally for that man in a way that if, if he doesn't have us, he's got, he's, he has no other choices, you know? So that resilience, that shit is real when it comes to, to, to how a brotherhood serves a man. And I think what I'm, what I, I, I really get present to as we're talking about these promises and and what's available to men when they step inside a trustable brotherhoods, I'm always also equally present to why men don't, you know, why men might not either have or lean into a trustable brotherhood. I mean, look, for you and I, we we had a, a lifelong best friendship that started when we were 10 years old. And then we went through a period of where we went on our separate ways. And when we, uh, we were doing life and, and doing the best we could, and maybe talking to each other in some cases, once a year, maybe two times a year. So as, as lifelong friends, you and I didn't sustain and grow and have a, 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 a trustable brotherhood. We, you were my brother, but uh, an active trustable brotherhood didn't exist for a decade or more. Wasn't even a concept on our in our minds. That's, that's a fact. Did, that's didn't, a fact. Didn't even know that was a thing. And, and I had friends, and but but to you know drinking buddies and people that you could talk about politics with, or talk about work or money or girls or finances or or whatever, but. 
but there are legitimate things that hold men back from from leaning into that and and first and foremost i think what we have to be willing to presence is that it is it is really hard in many ways for men to trust other men we speak a lot about how there are a lot of olders and not enough elders. And so many men have not had their fathers present in their lives. They have not had even, we've had experiences where, where men have talked about how their actual blood brothers would try to steal their girlfriends from them, um, cut them down, use sarcasm constantly, um, and, and just a lifetime of not really being sure that the friends that they had truly had their back. And so that, that, that distrust, that cynicism, the, the criticism that we can sometimes have for one another as men, we've got to really acknowledge that, that that is one of the, the things that's standing in the way of men stepping into and having a trustable brother. Yeah, it, it used to be a point of pride for me that I would go to these you know, transformational workshop events back in my late 20s, 30s, and I would be like, you know, one of the very few guys there. Literally, I'd be in a room of 300 people and there might be 20 guys and the rest are women at certain yeah. things that I would go to. Yeah. It was a point of pride. You know, I'm one of the, I'm one of the authentic dudes, whatever. And, but, but the, the, the shadow side of that is, you know, fuck guys, guys suck. Of course, I'm one of the only few guys because most guys are, they're, they're jerks. Again, my own distrust and my cynicism. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When we talk about yeah. what's in the way of men creating a genuine, trustable brotherhood, that cynicism, uh, distrust, yeah. the, the, also the, the, the criticism of men, of other men, yeah. how right. the hell am I going to create a trustable brotherhood with other guys when yeah. my overwhelming experience of men is that they're not trustable? Well, and, and you really are pointing out the fact that we, we largely don't even really notice that we don't exactly. say yeah. it's, it, yeah. we had a guy literally today say, I didn't realize how right. much I didn't trust other men until right. I had the retreat experience that we just had. And now I know what it means to actually have a trustable brotherhood yeah. and to now see the yeah. distinction there. I think it's like you, when we're swimming in the water and we don't really realize it, that is standing in the way. hundred percent. Yeah. L let's talk about, so that's the first thing that tends to be in the way, right? Uh, cynicism, the criticism towards men and distrust of men. The second thing is that we men tend to live very guarded, very walled off, very, very masked up, right? Presenting the facade. The I remember reading re about research a number of years ago about why men and women lie. And in general, we actually lie for different reasons, right? Both men and women actually lie the same right. amount. <laughs> An equal amount. <laughs> An equal amount. It's not like yeah. Yeah, women aren't actually that much more honest than men. It's just right. that what we tend to lie about is, is, a, is a different focus. What would, you, what would you guess it is for men, Tate? Oh, man. Uh, to make ourselves look better. That's exactly right. How'd you know that? Did, did I tell you? Did we talk about uh, this before? I, I don't know. But <laughs> that is, maybe I just am a man to know why I lie. <laughs> you fucking nailed it, man. That's exactly right. Men yeah. lie to make themselves look good. Right. I remember working with a woman once who uh, was going through a breakup and she, I remember she expressed a real frustration. She went to this event where her ex-boyfriend was speaking and she was like, he presented himself on stage, like the status he gave himself, the titles, the education. She was like, he was fucking lying through his teeth. None of that. So th there were seeds of truth, but there wasn't, but it wasn't true. Well, okay. What is he doing? But he's lying to give himself status to look good. Right. And that's don't the make me lie. don't make me guess why women lie. I'll have you just tell us. <laughs> they they tend to lie to protect relationship. Mm. Wow. Right. So they'll they'll tell more white lies or they'll 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 bend the truth a little bit for the sake of protecting the relationship. How about that? Isn't that interesting? That's really very interesting. So, you know, here we men are where where one of the things we do that gets in the way of a trustable brotherhood is we 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 wear the mask, we put on the facade and we, cause status, status is very real, very primal for men. I mean, the higher status a man has, the more reproductive opportunities he has on a primal, on a very primal level, uh, you know, the more resources he gets access to, et cetera. So I, I don't fault this for men. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we, we actually, I, I don't remember which uh, episode it was. It was actually the very first episode that you and I did as when the redux of this podcast was on the masks that we wear as men, right? A whole conversation about what are the reasons why we mask up, we pretend. Uh, and, and largely, you know, it is because we want to do better in the world, but largely we have not been shown how. And so we paint our faces as best we can to, to, to show the world again, because we know we have to perform as men in the world in order for us to be accepted by a tribe. And so, of course, we're going to, you know, keep everybody out a little bit at an arm's distance to make sure that we're okay and we're safe and that we're going to be all right. Which tragically just contributes to the distrust we have of each other. Cause yeah. like we, I, we, we can yeah. feel the yeah. inauthenticity for sure. Which just again, it's a vicious little cycle. <laughs> which leads to the third thing, right? Yeah. Of course, right? Which is then, of course, we it leads us into isolating as men, to lone yeah. wolfing it, to to trying to figure out how to go alone in our lives as men, and 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 the impact of that, right? There is a there is a real uh, impact to men going it alone. We know that seventy five percent of the suicides that that happen are of men by men men who are largely going it alone that don't have a support system around them that don't have other trustable men around them that that don't have people to turn to or at least you know we there's always that question well how many men you know to ask men how many men how many people do you have in your life that you could turn to and the the historical answer of that men used to to have you know four people five people now the most common answer is none it, it, it's, it's not that no one, we don't have anyone, but, but even if we do have them, would we, do we really reach out to them when we need them? Yeah. I know. I remember asking a guy that, you know, how many, how many people do you have that you could turn to in a crisis, you know, that you really, really have your back. And he was like, oh man, you know, I got, you know, at least two, three, four people. And I was like, okay, well, when was the last time you actually called on them? Right. And right. he was like, oh, I don't, I don't think I ever have. Right. Probably. Right. I got them, but, and, and, and that man I'm assuming has been through a crisis or two. Well, you know, what also occurs to me in this, the, the, in the isolation, not only are we isolating, but we're also resisting getting support, right? Do you need anything? Nah, man, I'm good. I'm fine. You know, so we resist support. We resist the challenge that would actually serve us. And again, these, these, the, all these, this is like a, a nasty conspiracy, the cynicism, the, 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 the being masked up and walled off, the, the distrust, the isolating. It's just a nasty little you know, cocktail of, of, of brotherhood poison that keeps us isolated and alone and disconnected. And, and even when, when a man is succeeding, there's, there's a, I, I think there's a, there's a deep, deep sadness, a deep existential kind of hole in his, his heart when, when he can't share that and be celebrated by other men. And, you know, the, the, the great thing, I think for the man listening here today, or the woman who's listening, who loves a man and knows that this shadow exists for him in some way or, or another is to, is to be able to first, like, let's just be aware of what are the things that I'm doing that are actually having me uh, not be in relationship with with other men that that if I were willing to do so, they might actually help enliven the life that I have, help me get more on purpose, have me feel deeply supported. Well, if if you're feel if you're being cynical or distrustful of men, just note that. And in some ways, you know, note the second thing, right? Are you guarded? Are you walled off? Are you masked up? And third, are you isolating? Are you resisting support? Well, for you, my, my, my challenge to you is to rank order. Like which of those things is most prevalent for you? What's, what's the second most prevalent thing for you? Because as we unveil this conversation today around brotherhood, it might become clearer to you about a next step that you might be able to take so that you could really be leaning into and, and start to be surrounded by other men that are up to something. And what we're going to dive into, what, 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 let's talk about our, our model for brotherhood. I mean, you and I, we've spent years now helping other men step into trustable brotherhood, you, you, modeling it again on our own experience, what you and I each have learned through our years in men's groups of various, for various intentions and, and capacities and ambitions. And, and, um, 
And I think that you know what we're doing, what you and I set out to do, even just for you and I. What yeah. year was that? 2017? 2000? Yeah, it was probably it was probably 17. So without even knowing it, you and I were were literally taking the first step to yeah. creating a trustable brotherhood. There was like there was an awareness, something was being birthed in us yeah. that you know, again, as I reflect on like this retreat and what we've been doing for the last six months with the guys in Elevate, even in, in Elevate Your Relationship, which, you know, even though they don't get to meet in person, at least not yet, we'll, we're, I think we'll figure that out sometime. But even in that community, like when men learn that they can trust other men, my God, man, what what becomes available is is just so is so impactful. And so let, let's talk about, let's unroll, let's unfurl. We're going to share with people today our model for brotherhood. And we're, we're going to keep this, we're not, not getting high level. <laughs> right. Because we really, you and we I really, can get into the weeds pretty quickly because uh, we, we love it so much. But, yeah. you know, one of the concepts that, that you originally envisioned and that we've been working with so much is that there are five pillars of a thriving man. There are five areas of a, light, uh, of a man that have to be propped up in order for him to really elevate his, ex his existence. And not that there is a, a particular order to it, but the very first pillar that got imagined was brotherhood. Yeah. was this idea. And, and since we love pillars so much, what we've also believed to be true and, and created in this model is that there are, if there are five pillars of a thriving man, there are three pillars of a trustable brotherhood. The, mm -hmm. the three pillars that men really need to, to be orienting towards, to be standing on. And the very first pillar that a man has to figure out how to, how to stand on is the pillar of having agreement and integrity with other men. So Brian, why don't, why don't you just bring us into, you know, some of the elements of, of what it means to be able to really have what are the kinds of agreements and what kind of integrity is necessary? So let's let's make a distinction too. There's there's the kind of brotherhood that where 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 a specific container is created, like a, like a men's group. You know, you meet every Thursday, or you gather on Zoom, or you do a retreat once a year, or like there's a very specific intentional brotherhood. Or like like Tate, you know, your journey in the twelve step program, right? There were men's meetings. Yep, sure. That that you went to, right? And then there's, and then there's just the guys like you hang out with, you know, men that maybe you don't have specific containers, it's, but you're, but you're wanting something deeper. You're still wanting to engage in more depth, create more depth in that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I was even thinking about Sunday football, Sunday football, who guys who get together at a, at a bar that, that is an element that they're going to get together every Sunday to watch football games together. That's a container for connection that really a, a fantasy football, uh, league that men are a part of that they join. Like those are containers because inside of those containers, those are the opportunities that get laid for having connections. And, and that in this first pillar agreements and integrity, what we're taught when we say containers, we also mean agreements. Right. Right. What do you yeah, mean by his agreement? Yeah. So let, you and I, back in 2017, when we were really like I'd been stepping into men's work for a few years, and you and I were really re-engaging each other in our lives. And uh, I mean, we had been for some time, but I think we were both recognizing the need for yeah. more consistent connection. Yeah, yeah. We created an agreement. We're yes. going to meet let's every Monday at, I think it was like 4 PM Pacific, 7 PM Eastern. Cause we were on yep. different coasts. Like we're going to get on the phone and just chat for an hour. Yep. Cause yeah, exactly. You're living in Los Angeles. I'm living in Charlotte. We were like, how in the world? And I have a I two still do Mondays, have a two hour drive home from work every Monday. And we were like, all right. So rather than you and I were, this is one of the things that we were experiencing is we could talk about the high level stuff, but we weren't, we didn't have a consistent container of connection for us. So when we did talk, we would talk deeply, but by and large, what we made a decision about is, okay, what kind of difference would it make in our life? If every single week you and I really dropped in for an hour to really talk about what's actually happening for us, 
what are our hopes and our dreams and our fears and our concerns and our worries and our fumbles? How can we really talk every week to really drop in about what the fuck is actually happening? Because prior to that, I was just, I had my mask on pretending like everything was fine, walled up. I'm doing my life and, and not really allowing people into my world about that. And so that, that I think, I think we actually started that part of it in 2018, six years ago. So that, you know, when we talk about agreements and integrity, again, we could get really granular. There's other, there's other, dis many distinctions we can go into in this, but, but what we just high level, uh, you, you know, we talk about this in our intimate relationship work. It's, it's, it's like connection rituals, you know, con creating consistent containers or rituals for connection for you and me. It started out as that Monday, uh, that Monday, every Monday meeting. Um, again, maybe it's, it's, you know, in my, in the men's group that I've been in for the last four or five years, one of the, the connection rituals that we have, cause we also live spread out across the country is we do at least two retreats every year, two weekend retreats every yep. year, somewhere, yep. right. Yep. That's, th that's an agreement we make. And then in the integrity part of integrity is then showing up for the agreements honoring mm. the commitments made. Mm. If you and I had made that agreement and then, you know, half the time we're just like, oh, I can't make it. I'm skipping mm. out or I forget, yeah. or I show up 30 minutes late or one day I'm just, eventually that's going to crumble. That's not going to sustain itself. Right. And so it's such a, a, and also what that does is it erodes trust. I can't trust that you're going to be there. If half the time you're just like, ah, I can't make it. I got another thing. Right. Which again, contributes back to the cynicism and the distrust of men. Even if I love you, I can't trust you. Yeah. And I, you're actually pointing, I'm, I'm thinking in this moment, this, sometimes we use words that usually feel like bad words, like integrity, right? To, because, and we'll talk about this in a moment, like around, uh, around another word that, that we use uh, accountability, but oftentimes I think words get used against us of like, you don't have integrity. What, what we mean by that is just, um, being whole. And, and, and so we say Monday at six o'clock to seven or seven to eight or whatever we come up to, what we mean by that is it doesn't mean that it, if, if you don't do it hundred percent of the time, it falls apart. But what we're committed to doing is saying, no, we have this set time. And by the way, if I have to change something or if I'm going to be late, I'm going to let you know, Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 10 minutes late to this thing. Right. Or, right. Hey, we need to reschedule because something else, can, but, but what well, us connecting is so important that we're going to make sure we don't just blow it off. And so integrity just means how can we be whole and complete about what we're committing to and honoring the commitments that we say is, is just a, that's just a fancy way of saying that. And so agreements and integrity, they notice they begin to counter that first obstacle of cynicism and distrust. Yeah. When yeah. we as men show up and honor the agreements that we make with integrity, yeah. we begin to build trust again. Yeah. Right. And 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 a guy, a guy who's listening or a woman who's listening, think through what containers of connection that you or your man have. Does he have container weekly? And I would say that that's what's really ideal. But even if it's not weekly, every other week or, or monthly, what containers of connection do you have as men in the world where you, you're, you're connecting with other men that are helping you elevate the quality of your life? And if you don't have that, okay, we'll just take note of that. So let's talk about the second pillar of a trustable brotherhood. So we talked about the second obstacle, which is being guarded, walled off, masked up. Well, the second pillar, the, the, the antidote for that, if you will, or the medicine for that is actually vulnerability, learning how to be vulnerable. And, and one of the things that we talk about, which I, I think is the right word to add to this is we, we use this word courageous vulnerability because we have been taught as men that being vulnerable means that you are weak or needy or less of as a man. And, and it, it's actually, you know, it, it's, we've been brainwashed to hurt ourselves because what we actually know to be true is that vulnerability is 
one of the most courageous acts that there is for a man to experience because we usually don't want to talk about our feelings. We usually don't want to talk about what our hopes and our dreams are for fear that they might not, might, might not happen. So courageous vulnerability is really the foundation for, from which we can have the fullest life available to us. And it begins by, by men being willing to be seen about what they're actually holding to, to give voice to, Hey, I'm struggling with something. Just that alone to say, which is, which is to begin to put down the mask that, that says you have to have it all figured out. So if a man is able to say, you know what, I'm, I'm struggling with something, your willingness to be seen is the foundation for vulnerability to start creating momentum where you get to be more fully enlivened. And of course, that in the foundation of that is that we got to speak up. We got to speak up in our lives. And, and, and by the way, we're not suggesting you just rush out there and tell anybody anything. You, you want to find the most trustable men in your life to begin to reveal what's actually happening for you. I mean, I've told the story before about, and I was meeting with a guy for a long, 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 long time. And one day he kind of revealed to me that he was thinking about committing suicide. And I'd been meeting with him for weeks. We had had a container of connection and, and it took what it took for him finally to be able to reveal that. But it was like this whole world opened up for him when he just gave voice to that. And obviously he started getting help in other ways and, and really took action. But it was when he spoke up the vulnerable part of himself and he realized he wasn't alone in his struggle and he wasn't, he, you know, he got a me too moment, you know, that, that every man that I know at one point in time or another does have a thought about maybe it would be better if I wasn't here. So given speaking up or that he's struggling in his marriage or he, he's worried that he's not being the father that he wants to be, or he, he's afraid he's not providing, right? Speaking up. And then of course, obviously, because men have been hurt in one way, shape, or form, either their vulnerability has been used against them by their partner. They shared something with their partner who just quickly just slammed it right back in his face or has had men that haven't been trustable. You know, the other element of vulnerability that is, is, is foundational is the willingness to be hurt. The willingness to have that vulnerability be thrown back at him in one way or another. But, but because if we're unwilling to be hurt, that's that wall that puts up and, and we're actually communicating in one way or another that I'm not going to be okay. If this use, is used against me. I, I think the, one of the greatest freedoms we men can, can give ourselves is through the willingness to be hurt, right? Through the willingness to be hurt. I mean, the, the vulnerability, again, it gets such a, oh, it's such a tragedy that it gets such a bad rap yeah. amongst men because it yeah. actually is, is the greatest I think practice that leads to profound freedom, the willingness to be vulnerable. And I'm not talking about vulnerability as a marketing tactic, Yeah, you know, especially social media these days, or, you know, just saying the thing you think your partner wants to hear that is vulnerable, but it's really not vulnerable. I mean, real vulnerability is, I remember, right. One of my first, one of my first forays into real vulnerability was with my girlfriend, right? When I was in the military, I've told you this story, Tate. This is a, a memorable story. Uh, I was like 26 and I remember we'd been dating for maybe six months and we didn't have any problems. She was great. We were great. But I remember having this feeling like, oh God, I'm going to cheat on her. I didn't have, there was no woman I had in mind. I just had this feeling like, oh boy, it's it, something's, something's going on. And I remember sharing that with her one day, just saying, look, I don't know what this is. I just, I, you know, don't want you to be afraid, but I, I have this, I have this fear that I'm going to cheat on you. And man, she handled that so beautifully. And, and I know a lot of women wouldn't in the same way that a lot of men don't, may not handle your vulnerability well, but she, thankfully it was such a teaching moment for me because she was mature enough to hear that and share some of her own fears that were going on for her. And we had such a connecting conversation around it. And, and man, that feeling, it actually dissipated. I remember like two weeks later, I actually had an opportunity 
to cheat on her where she never would have found out I was on a trip somewhere. I, my, my ex-girlfriend was there. It was a college reunion. And we even slept in like the same living room, you know, a whole bunch of people like piling into a living room and nothing happened. And I genuinely believe that because I was, I practiced vulnerability that day, it just, the energy was gone. It was no longer there. You know, Brian, one of the things that comes up for me as I think about you and your life is it, it's actually, you've, you've actually made a living out of your vulnerability. Your, your, your book, Chooser Every Day or Lever is really the byproduct of your willingness to, to actually share about the struggles of relationship that you are going through. And, you know, we yeah. talk about the promises of, 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 of courage, that we get more courage. We talked about the promise of being more powerfully present. We, we talked about the promise of, of resilience. I guess maybe what's coming up for me is wanting to ask you, how have you seen vulnerability actually give you those things? Oh man, vulnerability in a way makes me invincible, honestly. You know, it makes me invincible because I, I think a lot of what I've also done, a lot a lot of what I think needs to happen with vulnerability is is also confronting shame. Mm. I think one of the th reasons we aren't vulnerable is because we feel shame. Yeah. We're afraid that if again, if I reveal this experience yeah. I'm having, then I'm going to be treated as less than I'm not going to be worthy of whatever. I'm going to be exiled. I'll be dismissed. Yeah. And again, so many men carry and women too, but carry the, like that, that, that almost universal fear or wound that I'm not good enough for whatever, for love, for success, for, and so you know, I, I've been doing vulnerability work for, for, for so many years. And yes, my writing was a great catalyst for that. But also, again, being in, in, in men's groups with other men, doing, getting, getting into conflict with other men and revealing, uh, revealing the things that are really coming up for me and seeing other men model that and seeing other men be able to hold that and dance with me there and not abandon me, not tell me to go fuck myself and, and, and bounce and, so, you know, vulnerability has become for me a, a fucking superpower. Like there's just nothing anyone can say about me that either I haven't already said about myself and kind of faced it and dealt with it. And, and, uh, it doesn't mean I, I, I can't make mistakes and I can't still feel ashamed if I do something that was really stupid or awful or hurtful, but man, I, I think the, the gift of vulnerability is that it 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 connects me to the people who really want to know the real me and the people who don't want to know the real me they stay away that's that's powerful for me it's so powerful and i think your point around how it forces us to confront shame is just right on hits me right between the eyes uh, you know I, shame is something that i've really struggled with my whole life you know i have that part of me called sammy the shamer that that you helped me identify um so i i think you're 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 speaking into a really powerful part there the the other thing that i'm really present to is we're having this conversation and it just goes deeper each time we get to talk like this is in order to have a trustable brotherhood you can have a container of connection where you're getting together with other guys but you 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 probably only have a brotherhood by by that if if you're not being vulnerable you don't actually have a trustable brotherhood you just have a brotherhood you just have dudes that you're hanging out with you just have dudes that you're drinking with you just have dudes that you're to having topical conversations with but it it gets taken to a next level when you you're really able and 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 willing to be courageous with those guys to actually talk about something that you're that you might be ashamed of that you might be scared to share with them and you might even you know start at saying i'm 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 nervous to share this with you and and, and by the way, one of the things that we see pretty much every year, there's at least a couple guys, you know, a few months in, and, and sometimes it happens quicker than that, yeah. who, you know, when they, we, we, they come into the elevate year long experience. Okay. We're working with the same guys for 10, you know, these t same 10 guys for, for a year. Uh, inevitably there's a couple guys that are like, yo, when are we going to fucking take the kid gloves off and let's get real? <laughs> yeah. I mean, as if we're not already getting real, yeah. we are, but yeah. what they're, what they're really, you know, we, we, 
you, know, you and I are, we're, we are committed to making sure that even inside, even, even though there is a lot of challenge happening, we are doing it in a container of safety. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're doing it in a way where men can feel safe to yeah. be vulnerable. And again, man, we're talking about decades of distrust and cynicism. You can't just take the click. You can't just open up the, the, right. the, because of what a lot of men also mistake vulnerability for is vomiting their conclusions and judgments. Yeah. That's not yeah. vulnerability. That's just right. vomiting your conclusions and judgments. Yeah. And so, yeah. but still th there's that, there's that like that desire. Like, I think men are dying to, to be real, to get real yeah. in their conversations and yeah. their relationships because yeah. they're well, surrounded. And, and, and you're, you're, you're actually powerfully in my, my opinion, leading us to that third pillar, right? Cause that's actually what those men are actually I think calling for more than True. anything else at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're saying, let's get real. But what they're really saying is Sh I need help. I need help. That's the guy who's like, I, I, I need something that I'm not getting here because, okay, great. We're you, in my we life. Got containers. I'm it all in my life. In my life. I've got containers here. Now people are being vulnerable and, and people do. I thought actually where you're going is that, men early on and be like, Oh my God, I've never been around a group of trustable men before. I've never, I've never felt like accepted. I've never felt seen before, but that next level is what, what men are then. Okay. Now that I feel safe, now that I feel like I'm in, uh, you know, with trustable people, let's fucking go deeper, which is what they're really asking for is how to be accountable. How do, how, and this is that, that dirty word. This is, you know, I grew up where accountability meant that I was going to get punished because I wasn't doing something that I should do, or I was doing something that I shouldn't have been doing. And, and we've got, you know, we had a whole, a whole podcast. What was it? 118 or yeah, something. 118. Yeah. Um, and, and on, on accountability, just to be clear. Thank you on accountability. And I, I kind of frame it this way and it's not, but it's like, what is the secret sauce to success for us as men? Well, it's, it's the, the elements that we really talk about that are critical for men to be held accountable. And why don't you, why don't you lean into this? Tell, tell us about accountability and what we mean by that. Well, you think about the, the obstacles again, what, what gets in the way for men, isolation, Right, men isolating, lone wolfing it, resisting challenge and support. M most what I what I saw throughout most of my life was men didn't hold each other accountable. Men yeah. enabled each other's worst behavior. Mm. I saw that throughout my college years, being in a fraternity, being in the military. Yeah, I mean, you see, this is 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 um. <sighs> I mean, in so many organizations where men gather around a a, a a core mission, even if that mission be good like policing or uh, you know, soldiering for a good cause, whatever. There is an ethic amongst most men that I'm not, what's that? The bro code that I'm not supposed to you know, rat you out. I, 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 what I really need to do is shut my mouth when I see you acting poorly. Cosign on the behavior that you're involved in that is, that is wrecking your life. And I'm not going to talk about it. Exactly. I need having your back means, means not challenging you when I see you doing shit that's actually hurtful. That's right. Which again, just leads to more isolation, man. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. mean, you and I are again in, in our, what was our thirties, maybe late twenties, yeah, sure, early thirties. Sure. I think it was late twenties predominantly, but right. We, we were again, our, our friendship was coming back together. It was a time where we were getting to work with each other in a certain uh, capacity. And like, I remember, man, I was, I was not behaving well, right. I had made a huge mistake in lying to my girlfriend at the time about something. I remember telling you, I'm taking this to my fucking grave. I was like, that sounds like a, that sounds like the right idea to me. That sounds, in my, if I was in your shoes, I would take it to my grave too. Shame. Shame. And that was absolutely the wrong fucking decision. That choice set me up for catastrophe, for, for misery, for, for, for the next five years I suffered because of that choice. And, and I, and I look, you're, and this is true for all of us as men. We are very, uh, very compelling usually about our, the ways in which we can justify our behavior. We're usually very articulate 
about why it's okay that we're doing what we're doing and we can blame something else or, you know, again, justify our behavior. But a, a, a man who is surrounded by another man who can actually have him be, be challenging to him in a, in a respectful way, of course, right? That's, that's what we're a stand for. But had I really been able to respectfully challenge you, which is not to say I know what the, I know what you should do, but Brian, have you considered like that actually this thing that you're so yeah. scared to talk about yeah. might actually be the pathway to freedom in your relationship? Like that, that it might actually solve your problem, like just to have a different perspective in a challenging way rather than to cosign what, what difference, you know, and who knows in your scenario? Look, I, I don't, Look, I mean, that my book, Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her, was born of that foolishness at the same time. I mean, again, uh, you know, life, is, life lived well as a paradox. I, I really wish I could have done that moment differently. And I'm, I'm grateful for all that, that came of it all the same. You know, I, I learned so much from it. But I think this, what, what happens too when men don't hold each other accountable, by the way, is then it falls on our, intimate partner's shoulders. You know, speaking heterosexually, it falls on our women's shoulders to hold us accountable. And you know what? They don't fucking want to hold us accountable. And the truth is we don't want them to hold us accountable. We don't want to be in a romantic relationship where our partner's the one that's being like, ah, 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 you're the one that said this, that. No, I don't want that. I don't want a mommy. Nope. I don't want a mommy from my wife. And when we make her be the one that's accountable for my actions, that's all in, in essence, what we're doing. We're exactly. having her be a stand in for mommy and fuck that. I want to, I want to, now I will totally respect and honor. And, you know, especially if it's done in the right way, another man doing that, because one of the things that we need to really figure out how to do as men is to powerfully show up and stay showing up in the areas that are most important to us. We talk about this a lot, but most men, they show up and then they stop showing up, right? They show up in their relationship and then stop showing up in their relationship. They show up as a father and then they slink away and stop showing up as a father in the ways that they want to. So to really be held accountable so that we show up and stay showing up, that's the kind of accountability that we, we as men need in the world. We're, we're looking for discipline. The gap that exists between where I am now and where I want to go is usually discipline and other men need to hold us accountable for the discipline that we say we're committed to. And so you know, one of the primary commitments that has to be made in this domain is the willingness to be challenged. We have to be willing for challenge, willing, not disrespectful challenge. I, I will never be willing to be challenged disrespectfully. And that's often, again, when men challenge each other, it's kind of like, what are you, a pussy? You know, don't be a fucking pussy. You know, man up, do the, do whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. That's not, that to me is not a challenge that works for me. But like what you were pointing out earlier, it's like, you know, Brian, just, just, you know, are you, are you open to hearing some feedback on the choice that you're making? As an example, between friends, it, you know, when we do actual men's work, we have structures, we have processes that we can do challenge in ways that are respectful and powerful. But even just friend to friend, I actually, I actually, you know, did this recently with a with a friend, an old friend that I hadn't been in connection with for many years, and the reason that I had dropped connection with him is because. This is a man that that I loved dearly at one point, but man, he cheated on his wife on his girlfriends all the time. And again, I didn't know how to challenge that. I didn't even know. It's like my, th it's not my place. It, that's his thing. It's not my place to get involved or have an opinion, <clears throat> but that was just, there was so much other behavior. Like I just felt in my body, I can't be around this guy. And so I just let the connection go. And he reached out to me on my birthday and, um, uh, you know, I hadn't talked to him in years. And I decided, and I don't know if this was a wise thing or not, because we don't have agreements necessarily, but I was like, look, all right, if, if, if I'm going to have any kind of relationship with this guy, I need yeah. to be honest with him about how I feel. Yeah. And so I, I sent him a voice note, just, just giving him feedback about why I had dropped connection with him, mm. you know, cause he, even in his voice note, even in his call, he had, he had made some comments that were just like, yeah, this is, this is, again, this, this, this doesn't work for me. This way of being yeah. challenged. He was sort yeah. of issuing some challenge in ways that felt a little disrespectful, a little, a little shitty. 
And so, you know, I, I gave that feedback, like this, this is why I dropped connection and man, I, you know, I love you. I, res I, I respect you as you, I mean, you're so, you've been such a loyal friend in, in the past, but I haven't been able to be around you because of, you know, X, Y, Z, my experience of you. And look, I could be totally wrong about this, et cetera, but I never heard back from that man, you know? And look again, I don't know that that was the right thing for me to do. Cause he and I don't have a, we don't have a trustable brotherhood. But this is me, you know, being a stand for a trust. But the thing that comes up for me as you say that, right? If look, I want to be around guys that somebody can say something like that to me, and me, even if I felt like it was a fuck you, I can get, say no, nah, that that what you just said what, doesn't work for me, and that's actually how you build a trustable brotherhood. But people who aren't willing to have difficult, kind of, I remember you saying very explicitly to me, um, you you were like, you know, I if you ever cheat on your wife, I will not lie for you. I remember you saying, and that was like, a, a part of me was like, oh, well, fuck you. I thought you're supposed <laughs> to have my back on, on everything, right? Uh -huh. That was the confrontation to the bro code kind of thing. Like, right, right, right. Well, wait a minute, you're supposed to just have my back no matter what. Yeah. And what you were communicating to me was I, that's a, that's not going to work for me. I won't do that. And actually that actually, the other part of me was like, what a good fucking friend he is because he's unwilling to have me throw, do something that could destroy my life and my wife and my, because you're stand because you, as soon as you, you know, you met Elsa, you became a best friend for us. You became somebody who was committed to our relationship because you knew that that that's what I was committed to. So, you know, to be around men who are willing to challenge the, the old ways of thinking and to say difficult things in the spirit of love and to be willing to get it wrong, right? Not that we do it perfectly. We make mistakes and then we repair. That's part of what accountability also looks like is that we're going to make mistakes. We, get, we, 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 in this year long program, right? We have guys that are, are having more difficult conversations with the people that are in their life because they've been allowing unacceptable behavior. And by that, I just mean things that haven't worked for them. And now they're starting to talk up up talk about it what a what a power that we get when we're willing to actually be accountable and then be held accountable again this is we went back to the why vulnerability for me is a superpower because look i i want people in my life who who want to be with you know the real me whatever the fuck that means we can do a whole other podcast on what the real me means but you know, the, the, the me, as I know myself to be, I, I want people who are in on that guy. And by the way, that guy makes mistakes. I make mistakes. I'm not always skillful. Sometimes I say things that are hurtful, but man, I, I'm, I am willing to be challenged. I'm willing to hear back. You know what? Fuck you, Reeves. That did not land well for me. Okay. All right. Well, well let's dance. Let's talk about that. I'm, I'm totally willing to, if I, cause I don't ever intend to hurt someone, but I get that sometimes I may. And so I'm willing to dance in that place. And if you are someone who is not willing to dance there, then we are not going to be ever be able to create a trustable brotherhood. So I'm not even going to bother trying. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it becomes like the, the thing that I did with, with this old friend is like, well, look, I, we already don't have a relationship. Let me, let's, let me just be honest in this way. Again, I don't know if this is right. He may not want this and just see, um, but in a way that's me fighting for the relationship. And not just co-signing, right? And again, like what trust, a trustable, well, too many men are living lives in which they're feeling cynical, where they're guarded, where they're isolated, and they are surviving the life that they've created. And what we're speaking to here is standing on, on some principles that we think help men step out of that part of their life and can find a way to stepping into a tree. Imagine the difference that could be made in the world if more men had trustable men surrounding them. What difference would be made for them as fathers who are trying to raise their kids? What difference would be made as they're trying to lean into a relationship where they're not just surviving that? Mark Twain said it, said it this way, but there's the inverse, right? There's the, the two most important days of our life, the day we were born and the day we find out why. Hmm. The other side of the coin is, is that there is a final death that happens to us, right? Which is that's our, uh, that we take our last, last breath and we go into the great unknown 
or, and there is another death that can happen for us. And that is the death of our enlivenment, the death of really living life to the fullest. And that can happen for a guy when he's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or, or, or periodically, right? And the trustable brotherhood that he's willing to lean into ensures that if there's these flat moments that happen in his life, that that trustable brotherhood can reach back and grab his hand and say, nah, it's time to be enlivened again. It's time to take some new action. It's time to do the, what you say you matters to you. So I just, I get so lit up by this because I'm coming off this retreat where, where I've seen these men make a decision. Hey, I'm going to jump off the cliff for you with you and, and go into a year long experience. And then they get to have a mountaintop peak experience where they get to come to life more fully and know that that mountaintop is available to them. And a trustable brotherhood is the pathway to that whenever he needs it. So Tate, what advice would you give? You know, I, I've had a long meandering journey into this work. What what would what advice would you give to a man who's like listening to this and he's like, man, I, I, I want that. I get it. I get how helpful that would be, but I don't know where to start. I, I have two pieces of, of advice. The the one is the long road. And, 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 and still critically important. I, I say this often about a number of different things. There are three pathways out of this conversation for every man. The first pathway is the one that most men take, which is that they're going to do absolutely nothing <laughs> as a result of listening to this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to go and, and live their life, which is ultimately a dead end. The second is what I call the long road. And the long road is to take a small step and the small step could still change everything. And the small step that I would recommend for that guy is reach out to the most trustable man that you know in your life and establish a container of connection with him, whether or not it's once a week or once a, or once every two weeks or once a month and, and say, I, I, you're a man who I trust in my life. And you don't really know what's going on for me. And I don't really know what's going on for you. I'd love to connect with you for 30 minutes next week. You mind getting on the phone and we, we do that? Or you mind getting together for a coffee or a drink or whatever? And, and then be vulnerable with that guy. Tell him what's actually happening in your life and ask him for some, for some support right? That's a small step that you can take and then do that week after week after week and watch things come alive in your life. The, the third option is what I, what I believe to be a shortcut, which is take massive action, join something. It doesn't have to be elevated. It does it can, but find a, a massive action that you can take to join a group of trustable men and figure out what you really want to do and what you want to get out of it and watch in a six month period of time or a one year period of time, you be fast forward a decade and see what can really come out of something like that. That was, that was, that's my recommendation. And I mean, we're right around the corner from, uh, opening up enrollment to elevate 2025. Yeah. Six weeks away or something like that. This podcast will come out at the end of July. And then I think, you know, starting in August, but, uh, you know, it, 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 anyway, if you're a man and you're intrigued, you actually can pre-apply at brianreeves.com slash elevate Brian with a Y reeves.com slash elevate. And I think Brian, I think we should have some of the dudes from this year's retreat come on for a conversation. I, I don't, I don't know if we can make that happen or not, but I think I think that would be a really interesting conversation. Uh, I say let's do it. Let's 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 try to do that. I know that there are some men uh, who've already voiced. I mean, they're just so they're they're. I always feel sort of weird saying it ourselves, you know, because look, we're doing fucking epic work here, man, and and yet you know I've got that 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 programming. Don't brag. Don't. You know, don't be superlative. Don't speak in superlatives and in lofty statements. But, dude, fucking guys' lives are being changed, and the ripple effects that they're experiencing in their partnerships as fathers, as colleagues, as bosses, as sons, as sons, as sons. Yeah, oh I mean, man, it's it's pr it's profound. And so, yeah, yeah I think we yeah. we've got a couple of guys that I know they've said, man, anything you need, 
uh, we're in. So yeah, let's make that happen. I think that would be a really interesting conversation to hear from the men themselves. And so let's do that on a, on a, I'll come Dude, up. Great work at the retreat. Great work this year. Fucking, I love, love doing this work with you, brother. Truly, truly, truly trustable brotherhood, man. Foundation for 40 years. What, one of the things that I really love to is that I, I like, you know, I've known you for 40 years and I, you know, I, you're just, I think you're just such a, an exceptional human being. And I, I love getting to share you with people. You know, I've been in the public space for many years. You're like this, just this, you know, well-kept secret that, <laughs> that I get to kind of share through this work with people. Cause you are such a gift, man. You're such mm, a gift thanks, to people's man. lives. You're, you're, you're so you're enlivening to people. So for me, that's a great joy, man. I, 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 um, and I take all the credit for it. Yes. Well, you should, <laughs> <laughs> at least for your introductions. Oh man. Thank you so much, brother. Good to be with you as always, man. Hope you have an awesome, awesome, awesome evening, day, weekend, all that. Thanks, man. And, uh, you too, likewise. And to all of our listeners out there, thank you so much for tuning in to men this way. Please share this episode with someone that you know would be served by this and we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one.